Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. For premium picks, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I like to take risks. And sometimes I'll take risks on things that I don't believe will happen. But understand, we're trying to take money out of the casino, right? I want to leave with more money than I arrived. So since I'm a hedge better, in other words, since my game is to try to be on both sides of the bet, I'm sometimes going to take scenarios that even I feel are unlikely. But these scenarios will cover a hole in my betting strategy that I want covered. Now let's talk about Floyd Mayweather against Saul Alvarez. What I'm going to say might offend some people. Understand though, if you're going to be betting your hard-earned money, you're going to have to have hard opinions. Gambling is not for the wishy-washy. Now I see one of three scenarios for this fight. I personally believe that the most likely scenario is that Floyd Mayweather carries a blackboard with him into the ring and literally teaches Canelo the sport of boxing. I'm expecting Canelo to look worse than Robert the Ghost Guerrero did. Understand, I consider the Ghost to be undervalued, right? My own assessment of Canelo is I don't believe he has the upside of unpopular Victor Ortiz. Somebody's got to love Victor Ortiz, right? I also don't believe that Canelo fights as hard for three minutes of a round like Miguel Cotto does, right? Let's give it to Cotto. Cotto is in there and he's making the effort. I haven't watched Miguel Cotto fights where I thought that Cotto was only fighting 60 seconds or 90 seconds of every round. Unfortunately, I've watched a few Canelo fights where that's been the case. So I see three scenarios. The first is Floyd Mayweather wins by a wide decision simply too fast simply too good too much defense too much foot speed too much stamina for the young lion right that's the first scenario the second scenario that I see is Canelo coming in being a physically bigger man than Floyd Mayweather, right? Being able to land a lucky punch on Mayweather. And let's remember, Mayweather's glove did hit the canvas against Ab Judah. Mayweather's knees did buckle against Shane Mosley. Mayweather has been hit by some punches. If you look closely, I believe it's the very first round of the Ricky Hatton fight. There's a moment there where Mayweather gets hit and, in my opinion, falls back into the ropes, right? An observant ref might have even called that a knockdown. So Mayweather can get caught. There is a scenario where Canelo is able to land and takes out the smaller man. So I could see Canelo by KO. Now let's talk about the third scenario. I think it's unlikely, but I think it's possible. I think it's one we need to consider. You know, Mayweather has a major. Yes, I use that word. Let's underline it. Major hand speed advantage in this fight. Mayweather's not just good. He's fast. Very fast. He's the kind of guy who can hit you in the face and then move out of the way. You can't even counter it. Look at the Robert the Ghost Guerrero tape. Let me also say this too. Guerrero's not that slow. He looked that slow against Floyd Mayweather. Right? And of course, that's Mayweather's last fight. When I say Mayweather's fast, I'm not getting nostalgic here. I'm literally thinking about his recent fights. Now, the one thing I know about Floyd Mayweather is that when he has a hand speed advantage on an opponent, he punishes that 
opponent, right? One of the biggest beatings I've ever seen in the ring, systematically. Not a one-punch knockout, but dominance over a few rounds was Mayweather's destruction of Arturo Gatti, who recently was elected into the Hall of Fame. Now, I personally wouldn't have put Gotti in the Hall of Fame, but the point is simply this. There is a sizable portion of the boxing public who believes that Gotti was an elite fighter. He didn't look elite against Floyd Mayweather. Take a look at the Juan Manuel Marquez film. Now, in my opinion, Juan Manuel Marquez is a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? I'd be in the front row raising my hand the first day he's eligible for Hall of Fame induction. But he didn't look like a Hall of Famer against Floyd Mayweather. He looked slow. Now, if you look at the film footage, Mayweather knocks him down at one point, right? Mayweather who was coming back off of a prolonged layoff, I thought took his foot a little bit off the gas. It was clear though that Mayweather was racking up rounds. I also believe, this is my own belief, that Mayweather knows his generation. Mayweather is an avid sports fan. He's not just a boxer, I believe he's a boxing fan. You know I'm partial to gamblers in any event. I believe that when Mayweather fights a Juan Manuel Marquez, or when Mayweather fights a Miguel Cotto, I believe Mayweather has the utmost respect for opponents who deserve respect. I believe he looks at Miguel Cotto's career, he looks at Marquez's career, and he sees that they've been through many of the same things he's been through, right? different championship fights in different weight classes, etc. And so I believe Mayweather is the kind of guy who, against an older guy who he knows he has the hand speed advantage on, he'll take his foot off the gas a little bit. I still maintain that had Mayweather wanted, he could have closed the show against Miguel Cotto in the 12th round, right? Well, here's the point I'm making, and let's also remember, too, I know there are going to be people out there who say Mayweather doesn't have a punch. Try telling that to Victor Ortiz. Understand, too, the Guerrero fight's a bit of an optical illusion because Guerrero takes a big punch, right? Guerrero's the guy who fought Andre Berto. Now, Andre Berto is a huge puncher, huge. But yet there was Guerrero slugging it out with him. That fight actually turned into a brawl, right? And Guerrero took the shots. Don't think because Guerrero took the shots, everyone can take the shots. Think about Ricky Hatton. You know, Ricky Hatton had a great chin. That chin survived Costa Zoo, didn't it? The Shinshenko fight. That's a liver shot that takes him out. Hatton is totally lucid when he hits the canvas. He's not blown out in that fight. Hatton really has only been put to sleep twice. Once was, of course, Manny Pacquiao. But an argument can be made that Ricky Hatton went into that fight already susceptible to being put to sleep because he was first put to sleep by Floyd Mayweather. Now Mayweather does have hand problems, right? No question about it. I believe Mayweather has had treatment on his hands from time to time. That's certainly something you need to consider. But the third scenario that I see in this fight is Floyd Mayweather coming out, having a hand speed advantage, having an attitude, and deciding to teach a younger generation, a lesson. I could see Mayweather being too fast for Canelo, beating Canelo to the punch, and then deciding to close the show around the eighth or ninth rounds. Now let me say this. You know, I know Canelo's unbeaten. 
You know, I know I sound like a loon. When I'm talking about an unbeaten fighter possibly getting knocked out. But what I want people to realize is Canelo has come close to getting knocked out before. Cotto's older brother had Canelo on the verge of getting stopped early. Right? Canelo can get hit. Canelo can get hurt. If Floyd Mayweather has the hand speed advantage, and you know I believe it's a major advantage, and if Floyd starts landing punches, and if Canelo is simply not ready, not only that, if Floyd hunts him down during the 90 seconds of every round in which Canelo takes a nap, right, takes a breather, if Canelo finds that he's on too fast a treadmill, who's to say that he doesn't end up like David Price? We've seen it before. Guys with the gas tank on E, and it's the middle of the fight. Let me say this too. We know against Mayweather, who's gone the distance, against Cotto, against Mosley, against Marquez, we know against Mayweather. But if you're out of gas in the fifth round, you can't hide, right? He's there for 12 rounds. If I'm out of gas in the fifth round, it's just a matter of who stops the fight. Me by falling down in the ring, my corner by throwing in the towel, or the referee by simply him having enough of me getting battered in the ring. So here's the bet I want you to consider, right? And let me point out too, it's going to gut the profits. Right now, Floyd Mayweather is something like a 3-to-1 favorite, a little bit better than that, but he's like a 3-to-1 favorite, right? Bet 10 to win $3.33. That's pretty much the odds on Mayweather. I was at the MGM Sportsbook last week. They had a bet that was stunning to me. 11 rounds. Full rounds. If this fight goes less than 11 rounds, you're getting something like a plus 200. Right? In other words, you're getting 2 to 1 odds. So, I don't believe you're going to make enough off this fight to send a kid to college. But the bet I like, personally, the bet I'm playing, personally, is I like Mayweather to win this fight. Outright. That's the bet. Hedged with the under 11 full rounds at 2-1 to one odds. Here's why. If Mayweather closes the show inside of the end of the 11th round. Then maybe that kid is going to college. You win on both sides of the bet. But if Canelo comes in and catches an old lion who stayed in the forest a bit too long, then, of course, I'm somewhat hedged. In other words, if I have 100 over here to win 33, right? And if I bet, you know, 50 over here to win 100, then I'm hedged up. Canelo gets the KO. I can say to myself, okay, I've hedged the loss, right? I don't make money, but the casino's not keeping my money. Right? Conversely, if Floyd does what Floyd does and takes out this young kid, then I'm looking at 33 over here, right off the 100 outlay. I'm looking at 33 over here. Then I'm looking at 100 over here. I'm looking at a 133 profit. But here's the disclaimer. You need to understand the risk. 
Canelo did show some boxing skills against Austin Trapp. If Canelo wins this fight by a decision, then you're wearing a barrel without a shirt, right? Then you lose it all. Understand the risk. Let me also make another point. Austin Trout's a different fighter than Floyd Mayweather. Austin Trout's what I call a hoverer, right? He stands outside. He hovers around you. He shoots a jab, right? But he's hovering. He's not jumping inside. Now, I know there's a generation out there that feels that Floyd Mayweather doesn't jump inside. Please, look at the Diego Corrales tape. Please, look at the Arturo Gotti tape. If Canelo feels, excuse me, if Floyd Mayweather feels that you're a wounded carcass on the side of the ring and can't defend yourself, he's going to close the show. Right? So, it's high risk. This is a play on actual bets being offered by the casino. Let me amend my earlier video that I'm recommending right now as of July the 9th, 2013. Is Floyd Mayweather to win? Hedged with the under 11 full rounds. That's a very high over under. Let me also say this too. If it goes to a, dis uh, if it goes to a decision... I fully expect Floyd Mayweather to win by a wide margin, right? Don't think that Canelo can get inside and can throw those brutal, you know, lefts to the body from distance as suddenly or as effectively as Miguel Cotto, right? Styles make fights. I did pick Trout over Cotto, but understand Cotto's style, in my opinion, and I believe Mayweather has said this, is more threatening to Mayweather's style than Canelo's style. If Canelo's going to fight on his back foot like he did for rounds against Austin Trout, thinking he's going to outbox Floyd Mayweather, all I can say is good luck with that. Right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and let me just be clear here. I view Mayweather as the top shelf. If Canelo pulls the upset, Canelo will be the man in my eyes. Right? But I just don't see the hand speed. I just don't see the foot speed. I just don't see the stamina. I just don't see the defense. In my opinion, Juan Manuel Marquez is a better fighter than Saul Alvarez. Saul Alvarez has upped his hand speed. No doubt about it. Right? Saul Alvarez did make the Austin Trout fight much more competitive than I thought he would have. No doubt about it. But look at the copy box numbers for that Austin Trout fight. Right? Ask yourself, what strategy is Canelo going to use to beat Floyd Mayweather? I'm just telling you, Victor Ortiz is faster than Canelo. He tried to bum rush Floyd Mayweather. I'm just here to tell you, Miguel Cotto might be faster than Canelo. He tried to bum rush Floyd Mayweather. I'm here to tell you that Ricky Hatton's feet are much faster than Saul Alvarez's feet. And Ricky Hatton is excellent inside. He tried to bum rush Floyd Mayweather. What happened to those guys? Right? And if he takes a step back and tries to outbox Mayweather, when's the last time you saw anyone come close to doing that? Right? One of Mayweather's best boxing performances was his last fight right Mayweather is still the top shelf let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online and as longtime subscribers know you don't have to agree with me at all all I ask is that you leave your comments before the fight <laughs> and not after it right um, at post fight I like to hear from people I've heard from before the fight 
right? So if you feel I'm wrong, lay it out. Now's the opportunity. Thanks for stopping by.